Thank you, Jesus. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day that you have given us. Thank you, Lord, for this session that we once again have, Lord, today. Lord, as we have gathered over here, it is you who is guiding us, you who is teaching us. Because, Lord, you are a God full of love, you are a God full of mercy, and you loved us, Lord. You have mercy towards us. And that is why you came and died for us. You took our punishment, you took our place on the cross. So that today we are totally set free. Today we have received your love. Today we have received your mercy. And it is because of what you have done for us, Lord, today we are totally set free. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for teaching us this amazing truth. And Lord, you continue to give us the more of the revelation of your word because, Lord, you have given us power, you have given us authority. This kingdom, Lord, you have given us power to establish this kingdom on, in this planet Earth. And Lord, help us to use this power and authority for your kingdom, for your word, so that, Lord, the resources that you have given us are not gone waste, but the resources that you have given us, we can use it for your kingdom. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For your love that you have for us because you are a god full of love you are a god full of mercy you are a god full of compassion you came and died for us you took our punishment you took our place so that today we are totally set free today lord we have received the spirit of truth the spirit of love the spirit of righteousness the spirit of freedom the spirit of healing the spirit of blessing the spirit of peace the spirit of joy the spirit of forgiveness, the spirit of compassion. We no longer have to live according to the standards of the world. We no longer have to be conformed to this world, but we can be transformed. We can be changed by the renewing of the mind. We can be transformed by the changing of our thinking, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Abba Father, for teaching us this amazing truth. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray, Abba Father. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. So, thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. So, hallelujah. Praise God. Okay. So, um, do we have authority? Yes. Yes. According to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, God has given us power as goodness. Authority. Authority. Now, how do we use this authority? Do we create law or do we enforce law? Enforce law. We are all law. 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 Only God can create yeah, yeah. The law. Yeah. Now, we are all law enforcers. Okay. And God has given us authority to enforce law. Now, we don't create law, but we enforce law. And the way we are able to enforce this law is when we have received, because now God, we are, God has created the law. Now, the only way to enforce the law is when I know the law. Now, we don't create the law, but we enforce the law. Just like how there is a police officer, uh, police, they don't create law, but they enforce law. Enforce, in other words, does not mean you go and force someone to do something. It very clearly means, for example, if there is, uh, if if you are if you are walking down the road, you are walking, and you are seeing that there is a police officer standing at the traffic signal where the cars are passing, and the police officer is just standing over there watching, watching. Okay, and you're walking over there and he's watching the way you're walking. Now, he's over there watching everything that is happening just to make sure everything is good. And uh, there is a law now, uh, because of COVID, there is a law where you have to wear a mask. If you don't wear a mask, you are heavily fine, heavily fine because it is essential that you need to wear a mask because that is the law. Now, when you're walking, when you saw the police officer, what will happen to you? You will get scared. 
you'll get scared you will get the mask out from your bag or from your pocket wherever the mask is and you'll put it on your face right before you approach the police officer because you not not now why did you do that what made you did the police officer come and speak a word to you no the way how do you know that there is a police officer because of his uniform the way you can tell on his uniform that he's a police officer by looking at his uniform you put the mask on now he did not come and speak a word to you he did not tell you anything but only by looking at the uniform of that um officer you put the mask on your face and because you know the authority that that police officer has he can work he can use the authority against you and you can be heavily fined but example if that police officer was standing there in normal clothes now uh, normal normal clothes the way you know casual casual in 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 his casualty now if he is standing there in casual clothes would you put the mask on your face you don't even care about the mask you would have continued to walk peacefully as you were walking before but the way you came to realize that that is a police officer is because he is wearing a civil dress because he is in his uniform in the same way when it comes to the word of god when we are enforcing does not mean we force someone when i start living a life according to the word of god i start living a life according to the truth actually it is that word it is that truth when the word see because it is not me who has to convict a person it is the word that is convicting the person that's why i don't have to go and force a person to change but it is the word of god that is changing them are you understanding yes yes yeah and that is what the law enforcing we have, we have the authority to enforce the law god has given us the authority to enforce the law of his kingdom just like how the police officer is able to enforce the law praise god are you understanding are you understanding yes yes praise god praise god okay now god has given that's what we see in genesis 126 and god said let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion this authority is given to us and we are not creating the law of the kingdom of god but we are enforcing the law when i say the word law does not mean i am not speaking about the 10 commandments nor i am speaking about the 613 laws when i say the word law it is according to joshua 1:8 where god is saying this book of the law the law where the word of god is speaking about for example the law of life and death the death and life are in the power of the tongue the law of spirit of life in christ jesus the law of sin and death the law of seed time and harvest that law and this authority is given to us by god to enforce this law which we are not creating but god has created that's why the police officer is not going to create the law he can't if he is going to make the choices he wants to make and obey the the thinking that he wants to you know the way he thinks if he is going to think like that way and do it that way then surely he is going to lose his job because according to how the police officer has to work is that the law is not created by himself but the law is created by whom the law is created by the parliament the law is created by the government now god has given us this power god gave adam power means god gave the whole man power the human race but the devil took this power away for us how he brought us under slavery he brought us under sin he brought us under bondage how by making us believe a lie that's what he did to eve he spoke a lie the very moment eve believed the lie she committed sin when she committed sin when man committed sin now we had lost the authority that was given to us by god because the devil wanted to take this authority away from us because he, he was when he was an angel lucifer he was looking for the authority that god had he wanted to be higher than god and that was the authority that he was seeking for now when he saw this authority was given to man he got extremely angry and that is why now he tried to take away that He, he he tried to take away the authority that was given to us how did he do this 
he did this because he spoke lies he spoke words that were contradicting to the word of god when he spoke these words now the very moment man believed it the authority was taken away because that is what the devil was looking for he was looking for man's authority but now when we believe in jesus christ jesus has restored the same power same authority and that is why we we are that's why we have been set free from the law of sin and death by the law of the spirit of life in christ jesus the law of spirit of life in christ jesus is the new authority that is given to man and now god has given us this power god has given us this authority this power this authority is where i am using god's power in this planet earth that is why now and that's why many times uh, people say you know uh, i was suffering a sickness and i believe i said i am healed and i believed i am healed and i got healed you know what i would tell them i would tell them that is incomplete what you said i am healed is incomplete because if you are not going to use the name of jesus and you are only going to say you are healed you are, you have no more power that's why i would always say the difference between us and adam there is only one difference today we had to use the name of jesus at adam's time he didn't have to use the name of jesus but now we have to use the name of jesus because it was the lord jesus who restored the authority by his blood and that is the reason why whenever i'm speaking the word of god i need to speak using the name of jesus because now the authority i exercise is completely in the name of jesus the authority that i'm exercising is not my authority anymore but it is the name of jesus because now it is nothing of my strength or it is not my ability that i am exercising this authority but it is god's strength it is god's ability and it is because of his strength it is because of his ability now i am able to use the authority that god has given to me and that is why today we are law enforcers we have the power we have the authority to speak the words and enforce the law praise god now uh we, we, we you know we say we are not supposed to create law but we enforce law then why do we always say the creative power creative power is in our words we have to speak what and create what is the difference see when i'm creating the law we are not supposed to create law but we are supposed to enforce the law when we are enforcing the law by default we are creating the result for example when i am enforcing the law of the kingdom of god okay example when i am enforcing the law of death and life are in the power of the tongue by default when i am enforcing that law now the result is what i am creating that is the creative power we are not creating the law but we are creating the result of the law how are we doing this when we enforce the law by default the result will come because the result is either the result is always based on the law so if the law which i am enforcing is godly the result will be godly but if the law which i am enforcing is not according to the word of god if the law which i am enforcing enforcing is not according to the kingdom then surely the result the consequence of the law will also not be according to the kingdom of god because now god has given us authority to choose whether i am going to enforce the law of the kingdom of god or i am going to enforce the law of the kingdom of darkness mm. how do i enforce the law of the kingdom of god i am able to enforce the law of the kingdom of god when i start that's what i was giving the example of the police officer when the police officer was standing in the uh, at the traffic signal you the police officer did not come and tell you to put the mask but you by yourself looking at the police officer wearing in because of his uniform you know that this police officer has the authority to work against you because of you not obeying the law in the same way, when i am enforcing the law of the kingdom the demons know that if they are not coming in line with the word of god if they are not coming in obedient to the word of god i have the authority to captivate them and bring them to the obedience of christ according to 2 corinthians 10:5 you know just give me that 
2 Corinthians 10, 5. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Because, because if you see demons, through the thoughts. Because the demon have no more power unless through the thoughts. Praise God. Okay, 2 Corinthians 10, 5. Hallelujah. Praise God. Okay, does anyone want to read that? I'll read Anastin. Can I read? Yeah, yeah. Go on. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Okay, see that. Casting down imaginations and some high thing. Every high thing. Every high thing. Every high thing. Every. Every. So that means everything, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, it is. You know what is this every high thing? The knowledge of the kingdom of darkness. Because the knowledge of the kingdom of darkness will always try to exalt itself against the knowledge of God. But he's saying, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity some thoughts to the obedience of Christ. Every thought. Every thought. Every thought. Every thought. Did he say some thoughts or did he say every thought? Every thought. Every thought. Every thought. Every thought. So that means I'm supposed to rebuke the thoughts, right? Yes. 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 You know, the Bible does not say about rebu rebuking the thoughts. Uh, have you ever cut with the knife? Yes. Yeah. No? Yeah. Okay. yeah. You've not cut? Okay. Okay. Uh, yes, I have cut. I have cut. I have cut. Sorry. Cut, cut. Yeah. When you cut with the knife, have you ever tried cutting, uh, turning the knife over and trying to cut with the blunt side? No, no. Is it possible to cut? When I was small. Ah, you have tried. Is it possible? No, it is not possible. Because there is a sharp, sharp side for a reason. Yes? That, no, 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 that is what he yes. said. Uh, bringing into captivity. He did not say rebuking every thought to the obedience of Christ. But he said... Bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. There is a big difference between rebuking the thoughts and bringing the thoughts into captivity. If you are going to rebuke the thoughts, you are using the knife on the blunt side. It is like you are taking a fishing uh, rod, fishing rod, and uh, they, 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 you are putting the bait and you are using it as a hammer against the water. It is like that. But according to God, He is saying captivate means. Every thought that is coming, attacking my mind, I'm supposed to replace it. If you're trying to rebuke it, you will not be able, because you're not supposed to rebuke the thoughts. You have to bring the thoughts to captivity. You have to replace the thoughts with the word of God. Praise God. You know what is rebuking? Rebuking is not rebuking the thoughts, but rebuking is when you speak a word that is contradicting to the word, you are binding that word because it, now you're saying, yes, I did speak the word, but now I've rebuked you. You don't have any more power. So you can't rebuke the thought. Rebuking the thoughts, you, there is, rebuking is not for the thoughts, but rebuking is for the words that you're speaking. For the thoughts, you have to bring them into captivity. And that is what the authority that God has given us to enforce the law means to bring every demon, every thought to captivity. Every demon that is trying to go, go across the limit, 
you have to bring that demon into captivity because the demon will always try to come in you try to attack you that's why how many of you have played table tennis before when you are playing table tennis okay when you see when you are playing table tennis there is the ball right you yes. will say yes the other person will give the other strike then you will give another strike the other person will give another strike and it goes back and forth like that the devil is trying to play table tennis with us every single day trying to put <laughs> all the word of god but the devil has the racket called the lie now what is the ball the ball is a mind now he is trying to attack a mind with the words that are contradicting to the word and he's trying to hit that ball with the racket of the lie but when you start giving him back the the striking him back with the word of god opening your mouth and speaking the word of god now the devil is getting frustrated he's getting he's getting panicked because he is saying this battle is not defeating you but this game this match is building you up is making you stronger and that is when he will flee from you because he knows that you there is no point of playing this game because even if i'm going to play that person is surely going to win and that is the life of a christian person a christian a who is a, a true christian a true christian is when he understands the power and the authority that is given to him and enforces the law Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise so God. When you see enforcing the law, enforcing the law is what not forcing someone to come in line with the word. That that's what we do. No, when there is a there is a a a, a, a your loved one who is not believing, what do we try to do? Force them to come to the word. Force, Force them to come to the word. Like come, come, come. You have to come. Yeah, we try to force them to come. We will try them. We will try to do our best to give them a kick in the pants to tell them to come. Right? Yes, 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 yes. Even if you don't like, you pull them, and you have to come and see. It is not whether you like. It is whether I want to make the decision. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You have to listen to me. I know that. Whether you like or not, come. Yeah, whether you like or not, you have to come. Compulsory. 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 No choice. Yeah. yeah. Now, uh, now when you are doing that, many times you try to force. You know, if you are trying to force the love done. You know, if if you see many of them are forcing the love done, and you ask, do you believe that your love done is changed? Yeah, I believe. They say I believe, but they are forcing. You know, if they are forcing a loved one to change, that means they did not believe. Because what is belief? Action corresponding to the message received. If yeah, action corresponding to the message. If they would truly believe, if they would truly believe that the person is changed, you know what? They would have not tried and gone and forced. Instead, they would already believe that the person is already changed. That that's why if you see a person who's going to believe that the loved one is changed, is not going to try and force the person to agree, but he's saying. i already believe that he's already changed now your action will start corresponding you will now no longer go and tell him come to church come and pray come and do but you will start telling him it it is just like when when we are in the believers when we are you know the body of christ will we if if there is a b c d in the body of christ will a force b will b force c will c force d to come to the lord no 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 because a knows that b already has experience personally god personally yeah that he that b does not have to experience the love of god through a but b has already experienced personally that is yeah. what, even today when you understand that when you believe when your action corresponds that the person is already saved my loved one is already saved you will no longer try and go and force the person but you know what you will do you will go and treat him as he's already saved you will start sharing with him your testimonies how the lord is saving you because you already believe that he's already transformed you already believe that he's already changed because for you you are not looking at your loved one as will be changed but that he's already been changed amen 
That is a Christian lifestyle. lifestyle. Christian lifestyle is what? A Christian lifestyle is when he comes to the understanding of the word that God will not do it, but God has done it. Now to receive what God has done, I need to enforce the law. I need to practice my authority. Praise God. So are you understanding? Yes. 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 Uh, if a person is going and uh, shooting with a gun, okay, without the bullets, won't you call that person a fool? If a person is shooting with a gun without the bullets, you will call that person a 100% fool. Maha fool. Maha fool. Yeah. Great. So I'm Mega fool. Sorry? Mega fool. Mega fool. Mega fool. Like that many a times we are also acting like that many a times, right? Yes, yes. Even when though we sound... have the word. But then you know? When your sound will come up, but no. Yeah, we, we also act like that, right? Yes. Many a times, oh even God. though we have the word, we are even though God has already given for given to us, we are waiting for God to give. You can't blame you, you know, if the soldier is going in without, with the gun without the bullets, he can't blame God for saying why he why he lost, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. he did not load the book because he cannot blame God that he lost the bullets because he didn't even load the bullets. Yeah. So he can yeah. Yeah. Wow. Who oh, will put your camera on? Yeah. Please, if you can, if you can, huh? <laughs> we'll put the mic off. Yes. Praise God. Praise, yeah. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Owen. Thank you. God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. So Praise like, God. Others too can put on the cameras and talk while yes. I was preaching. We'll all interact and share and we'll become so good. Praise God. Praise God. So, wow, I'm so Praise God. Praise God. Hi. Praise God. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, wonderful. Praise God. Okay. So many times we are also like that, saying, yes, we are thinking what God will give, God will give, God will give. But is God going to give or are, is God has already given? God has already given. God has God already, God already given. given. So how do we receive what God has given? Uh, to say. Okay. Believe. Believe, okay. Exercising the authority. That's what we were saying all this time. The authority is given to us. We are law enforcers. So to receive what God has already given, I need to exercise the authority. Yes, yeah, Ian. Do I have a question? Uh, yeah, I do. Um, I'm a bit confused um, about creative power and enforcing law. I didn't quite get it. Okay, okay, okay. See, we are not creating law. Who creates the law? God. God. God creates the law. Now, God, God has given us authority not to create law, but we are enforcing law. Okay. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so we are using that law, putting into action what God has already done. For example, if, if there is a law of a certain speed limit on, a, on the road, okay? And when there is a certain speed limit on the road, now if someone is going to cross the speed limit, what will happen to that person? They get a fine. They get a fine. Fine. He has to go through a consequence. Because according to the law, the law was saying you have to go certain speed limit. Now, whose job was it to make sure that no one goes across the speed limit? Police. 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 Because they are the ones who are putting that law of going on that certain speed limit on the road into action. Yeah. In the, the, in the way, government, when the government created the law, the police had enforcement. Wow. Yeah. Correct. 
so when we are enforcing the law of the kingdom of god that means we are putting the law of the word of god into action okay so we are not creating law but the law that god has created we are enforcing just like a police officer will enforce the law that the government has created in the same way the law that god has created we are enforcing that law now what i was saying is we have the creative power so many a times we say i have to speak words and create now there is a big difference between creative power and creating law that's what i was trying to say wait creating power and creating law yeah creative power is when i'm speaking words i'm releasing the creative power and i'm creating for example if there is a person who is want, wanting a healing okay if a person has a lung cancer for example now when he is confessing the scripture he is believing the word of god now he is creating the new lung means he is bringing that new lung from the unseen to the seen what god has already given him he has to receive it by exercising the authority by his words because the moment he starts speaking the word saying by the wounds of jesus i am healed now he is bringing that new lung from the unseen to the seen seen that is creative power creative power okay yeah. so when i am enforcing the law of the word of god when example when the bible says that the life are in the power of the tongue that is a law now when i am enforcing that law which god created now it is that law the consequences of that law is that creative power which can either be life or death now did you understand um, yeah so creative power is bringing god's promises from the unseen into the seen yeah by speaking the words to the authority and forcing it and creative law is god what god's law right what he's already promised yeah. us so what you are speaking what you are enforcing what the law you are enforcing is the law that god has created and it is that law which you are enforcing which god has created that is bringing something to see which is the creative power oh okay yeah i get it thanks uh, can i add something uh, else yes yes go ahead yeah so creative power anything that we want see and in our life you know anything maybe say suppose now i want one job or i want a nice dress so anything in my life you know i want something from uh, you know from god and when i'm speaking the unseen and i'm calling things that are not as though they were that is creative power anything that we want in our life and we're speaking faith that is creative power which is being operated in our life praise god praise god yes correct that is exactly what cn that is how it works she explained better than me no 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 you are you are just I'm sorry. I'm sorry. yeah thank you bullet for sharing thank you jesus let's go let's go okay now uh, how uh, how is the police officer able to enforce the law just like that can he enforce because he is the no not because of authority can you repeat the question that is how he is enforcing the law but i am asking what does he need to enforce the law so i am asking what does he need to exercise the authority he needs his police uniform license no i mean license and uniform <laughs> license and uniform okay no not right. that is there everything he needs but there is one more thing which is very very important as a police officer proof that he is a police he needs uh, he needs to know that the law what is enforcing is for the welfare of the majority of people are accepting it yeah. yeah come right or wrong yeah. he needs to know the law that he is going to enforce for example if the if the police officer does not know the law of the of the road speed limit can he enforce the law Mm. he has to spend lot of time studying the law knowing how the law works knowing how it all works right yes 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 because only when he knows okay now he is able to 
he is able to enforce it yeah because yeah the authority is also they are not saying yeah the authority also he needs you yeah, are some of your uh, most of you said authority he needs uniform he needs all this yes he does need it but most important thing is he needs to know the law even if he has the authority even if he has the uniform even if he has the license and he does not know the law will it be of any use no no he will be telling people according to his own opinion what to do which is actually contradicting to the law which the government has made so the most important thing is he needs to know the law of the king of the kingdom or of the country in the same way when i am enforcing the law of the kingdom of god i need to know the law of the word of god how do i know the law of the kingdom of god by spending time studying the word yeah joshua one it i have to do the three things what are the three things yeah wait meditating on the word day and night excellent meditating on the word of god yes meditating on the word of god day and night speaking that word of god and applying that word when i am doing these things now these three things i know the law this book of the law i know the law and i'm able to apply that's why god said right grace and peace be multiplied through you through the knowledge of jesus christ and our lord right yes yes yeah the knowledge of god and jesus of our lord so that's why the knowledge is extremely important if a person does not have the knowledge then he will not be able to enforce the law he will not be able to use the authority that's what 2 peter 1 to just give me that you know Praise God. Two Peter one, two three, two three and four. We will see. See that second verse first. See that grace. Does anyone want to read it? Two three four. Anyone? Okay. Yes, okay, can... Ovid, you can read verse number two and three, and then Cian can read verse number four. Grace and peace be multiplied to you unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, according as His divine power had given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Through the knowledge of Him that had called us to glory and virtue, yes, yes. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Okay, see that second verse, grace. And peace be multiplied unto you. What is multiplication? Multiply, uh, multiplying the um, in abundance. Multiplying in abundance. In abundance, having peace coming more. Yeah, coming more. Correct. Now enough. Just give me that one once again. The scripture. Don't take it down. The scripture. So that grace and peace be multiplied unto you. Grace and peace. He did not only say grace, or he did not say only peace. He said grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Now, why he is saying grace is because grace and peace, everything else—love, joy, peace, forgiveness, compassion, mercy—all comes under grace and peace. So grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus, our Lord. That's why, for example, if someone is driving, okay, without a license, what will happen to that person? 
Because he will get caught. He will get caught. The best way he will get caught is he will go into an accident. Because he doesn't know how to drive. Correct. He doesn't know if he wants to go this way. He doesn't know which lane to be in. If he wants to go that way, he doesn't know how to go. He is just mixed up. He is. He doesn't know how to go. He doesn't know how to drive. Right. Yes. Yeah. He doesn't know anything. How to park the car? How to switch off the car? How to switch on the car? Which gear to put at what time? He doesn't know anything. Right. Yeah. Yes. A person who is having the license and is experienced in driving we, that's why if there are two people one person doesn't have a license the other one has a license which car would you prefer to sit in the one which has a license because you know that this person can make some error but the one who's experienced who yeah, yeah. Has, he wants to go safely back home yeah mm. yes so when he is saying grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord, if I don't have the knowledge of God and if I don't have the knowledge of Jesus our Lord, then I cannot have grace and I cannot have peace. The only way to have grace and peace, that's why he did not say to receive grace and peace is by how much you work. He said to receive grace and peace, it is through the knowledge of God and it is through the knowledge of Jesus our Lord. Praise God. That is why the same person who did not know how to drive at all, once he started to know, once he started to understand how the system of driving works, now he is becoming perfect at driving. In the same way, when if I don't know the promise of God, there will be no grace and peace. Instead, there will be hatred, there will be bitterness, and there will be, you know, there will be full of hatred, there will be bondage, there will be fear into our lives. Why there is fear, why there is bondage is because we have not got the knowledge of Jesus God and Jesus our Lord. And I would say, Whenever the Bible says the word knowledge, whenever you see the word knowledge, it is always speaking about experiential knowledge. The Bible never speaks about theory knowledge. The Bible only speaks about experiential knowledge. So if you're wanting grace and peace and you are having the theory knowledge, can you receive grace and peace? No. No. Because if you want to receive grace and peace, you have the experiential knowledge of the word of God. You need to have the knowledge of God. You need to have the knowledge of Jesus our Lord. In the same way, even today in our life, if I don't know the word of God, I cannot experience what God has for me. To experience what God has for me, it is when I have the knowledge of God, when I have the knowledge of Jesus our Lord. Because the more I start studying the word, the knowledge of God is being established in me. Now this knowledge, this experiential knowledge is the way I can experience grace and peace. Praise God. See the next verse. According to the divine power, will give unto us Exceeds. Oh. Has. 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 Enoch has. Loudly. Can you repeat the question? <laughs> uh, put the scripture once again, you know. Then you'll understand my question. Only if you put the scripture once again. Okay. According as my divine power will give unto us according, according to, to his divine his, power has given unto us has given unto us some things that pertain unto life. All things. Did he say something? All things. Did he say all, all, things. Things. all things. All things. All things. That means everything that we need to live a prosperous, successful life is given to us. That's what he's saying. And to us, all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him. Did he say knowledge of us or knowledge of him? Him. Knowledge of him. 
knowledge of him that will call us or that has called us. Has, has called us. Praise God. So that means for us to live a prosperous and successful life, everything that we need will not be given to us, but has already been given to us. Amen. Has God. been given unto us. The life and godliness has been given unto us. That's why to live a prosperous, to live a successful, to live a victorious, to live a life pleasing unto God, everything that we need has already been established in us, has already been given to us. By the knowledge of Him, not the knowledge of us, the knowledge of Him, the experiential knowledge of God that has called us to glory and virtue. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. So God has given to us everything, not some things, but everything that we need to live a prosperous, to live a successful, to live a victorious life. Because the authority to live this prosperous life, the authority to live this successful life has been given to us. Now, that's why he said knowledge of him. He did not say knowledge of us, knowledge of him. What is this knowledge of him? His the law that God created. Not the law that we create, but the law that God has created. God has created. That's why many times in our life, I would say we become the master and we tell God to become the servant. Right? Isn't that many times happen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, you do me a favor. No, I will order. Master, you become the servant. I will tell you how yeah. to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all I have earlier is to order God. You do this, you do that, you do this, you do that. And you yes. do it. No option also. And I no was... We were all like that. Yeah, yeah. But sometimes even today we are like that. Yeah, very true. Yeah, but it has to be the opposite way around. Lord, I become the servant and you become the master. Yeah. And sometimes we even want to blame God. You know, this happened because God only did. We want someone to blame us, we blame it on God. God only knows how it happened. We blame it on God. That is why when COVID started, everyone started to put Facebook messages and everything saying, you know, God sent COVID. He's such a mean, he's punishing us. He sent COVID. Maybe this is the end of the world. We are touched by COVID, right? Mm, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but actually, what the knowledge of God was that the law that God created that everyone was creating. Everyone was created. But God has given us the authority to enforce the law that we create or to enforce the law that He has created. Enforce the law that He has created. That's why I would say it is a choice. It is a choice whether I'm going to enforce the law that He has created. Or I'm going to enforce the law that the devil is creating and putting into our mind. That is why many a times we, you know, we we follow world's philosophy, right? Mm. World philosophy. What is philosophy? Anyone knows? A set of ideas, beliefs. Yeah. yeah. Like that much I mythology, something like that. Philosophy. Sorry. What did he say? What did he say? Okay. I said that um, like something like different uh, um, religions and beliefs about um, particular thing, myths, legends. Egypt, yeah. Alistair knows correct answer. Yeah. Philosophy is a set of ideas, values and a belief system. So many a times, uh, if you see tradition, culture, all this is a belief system that we have, right? Yeah. And this belief system that the world has created, the law that the world has created. But according to God, we are not supposed to create the law. And create law means follow tradition, follow culture. But we are supposed to enforce the law of the kingdom of God. That's why Jesus never went according to the traditions, the cultures that others follow, the Pharisees followed. He trained them to go, to go according to the system of God, if you see. 
in the same way today we are supposed to go according to the system of god we are not supposed to try and create law but we are supposed to enforce the law that god has already created when i understand that oh, now i'm no longer going to be waiting to you know wait you know going and creating laws and going according to uh, what i think is right but now i will be going according to the word of god the knowledge of god yes praise god so are you understanding yes praise god we will continue on this in the next class also uh, tomorrow we will have a class as uh, usual at 7:45 uk time praise god thank you no 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 1:15 to 1:45 right yeah yeah so does anyone want to add anything mildred do you want to add anything to this Oh, you gave a very good explanation. Praise yes. God! Thank you. Praise God! Very nice explanation. Thank On the you. Law, right? We have to. Uh, we have to uh, say. We have to uh, be the doers of the word of God by taking. Uh, if we want anything in our life, we have to speak the word of God, and that's how faith comes into reality. Because yes. word is great power. Word is great power. Yes. Okay, so any testimonies, anyone? No. Praise God. Praise God. Anyone? Want to share? Praise God. Okay, so we can close with the prayer. Does anyone want to do the ending prayer? Anyone? I'll do the ending. I'll just okay. Okay. Yeah. Anyone yeah. else wants to do? They can go ahead. <laughs> okay, I'll do it. I'll yeah. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Father, we thank you for this beautiful day, for this beautiful session, which is led by. Alistair, it was your word which was being preached, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for teaching us the truth today that we have to be the doers of the word of God, and we have to know your word. We have to know the law, uh, your word, in order to lead, uh, lead a prosperous, successful life. Until we know your word, how will we lead a prosperous and successful life? I thank you, Lord, as for your word. You have given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, and you have blessed us all with a good mind, with a good body, and everything that we need till our last breath. Lord, you have already given it to us. Thank you, Father. From now on, we seek you. We seek your word. Thank you, Lord, for bringing each one of us here in the Zoom and connecting us to to your word, to your love. and we are learning your love more and more each day thank you abba father thank you jesus thank you holy spirit for this precious day in jesus name amen 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 amen, amen. praise god thank you alistair